Iranian Liza Laziza is a world-renowned belly dancer who came to Cairo to fulfill a dream, yet she hasn't performed on a major stage here for two years. The dance, from what I see it, is at the moment rapidly fading in the background, whereas before it was right up front. It's very serious and I'm part of what's going on. I'm part of the big decline what's going on in the dance. During the ban on foreigners, Lisa was forced to teach for a living. Now she's free to dance again, One, she's had trouble finding two, a suitable platform turn, for her talent. One. Egypt's been the central nervous system for the dance for a long time now. An attitude, accent. Yeah. It's not as um, great as it used to be, and that's because of the climate of the times, socially, economically, religiously, and there isn't any education on the dance in Egypt. So I really do predict it fading into the background uh, as we speak. This street in central Cairo used to be a hub for the dance and music industries. Today, only two small instrument workshops remain. The decline of big nightclubs, the rise of pop videos, an increasingly conservative society. All of these elements are conspiring to marginalise the dance. Performers here say that Egypt takes greater care of the opera. Egyptian dancer Wafa Fauzi, who performs for tourists on a Nile cruise boat, believes the fears are unjustified. I'm not worried about the dance. It can't really die out in Egypt. It's an important part of our popular heritage. Nagwa Fuad used to be one of Egypt's belly dancing divas, and she's very concerned that subtleties of an art dating back to pharaonic times are being lost. What you're seeing nowadays is just shaking, which is very Turkish. Egyptian dancing has many more brilliant movements, which is why there must be an academy to teach it, where I could lend my expertise. But belly dancers here worry that no one will take heed and that their cultural heritage will be consigned to the history books. Malcolm Rabin, BBC News, Cairo.